Welcome to QWERTY Writing Life Podcast, where we have candid chats about our creative lives. This is May. And I'm Joy. For more information about our podcast, monthly newsletter, or author resource series, visit us at QWERTYWritingLife.com. That's QWERTY, spelled Q-W-E-R-T-Y. It's the first six letters on your keyboard. So, are you ready? Grab your tea. Or your coffee. And let's chat. Hello, everyone. It's another week. Hello and welcome. You might happen to notice that we are sitting beside each other, which doesn't happen very often. Oh, I'm super excited that it is today. <laughs> <laughs> um, you might also hear a little bit of background noise in this one as well. We are sitting downtown uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, in the same place. Um, and you're just you, we're, this is where we're doing it we just decided that we were going to record here now so we are waiting on chicken tenders yes um, this is a candid moment guys that's right <laughs> candid conversations waiting for the chicken tenders and then beans and rice yes <laughs> and this is us creatively redeeming time <gasps> Ooh, i like Boom. how you did that Ooh. i know we're well so good done. we well take done. our own words sometimes yes we do <laughs> Well, um, so we are going to have a candid conversation with you. We just finished a workshop this weekend, um, yesterday, and today we have uh, been working on the companion workbook for Finders Keepers, a practical approach to find and keep your writing repeat partner, which is the book that we have out already. So that's what we're doing here, and that's what we're going to be talking about today in the actual podcast. But before we do that, let's talk about our creative weeks. What do you want to talk about, Joy? Oh, goodness. Let's see. What have I done? So today we got to, and we might have the same creative week. So yeah. You want to talk today, about that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got to go to the homecoming from our alma mater, yes. um, William Terry University. It was college when we were there because, you know, we're special and vintage, apparently. <laughs> uh, but we had a poetry and prose reading there, and it was so much fun. Yeah, it absolutely was. Yes. It was really cool because we got to speak to current students about creative writing, about publishing, about tips and tricks and all of that kind of stuff because it was a little bit of a smaller crowd. It was thunderstorms almost all day today. So we had some current students who came in, but because it was a smaller crowd, we were able to get a lot more intimate and, and share things to them um, like what alum to current student, which was kind of cool. It was like full circle situation, um, and it was a really neat thing to be able to be a part of. Um, but I did read a portion of my water novel there, so it was a, a bit of the first chapter of my, my water novel, and it got, uh, I think that they liked it. They said they did. <laughs> so, <laughs> rave reviews, I will say that, yeah, because so. she won't say it herself, but mm-hmm. I can say it. Well, you know, it's those, that southern that comes out. <laughs> but uh, so I, I did read that for the first time. The only other place that I had read that out loud was in the um, Zoom meeting that I had with the group from the writers retreat. So there was one, two, three, stu- uh, three people there, and then me. And so it was four of us in the group. Uh, so these were strangers. They were not. <laughs> so that was a little bit intimidating. I did stumble over some words a little bit, but. Uh, Overall, I'm glad I made that decision to do something that was a little outside of my comfort zone. I could have gone gone back to the poetry book. I could have gone to Finders Keepers. I could have gone to something that was safe. And I did it. And I'm glad I did it. So, there's that. That's exciting. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Also, um, Joy read from Any Good Thing. Mm -hmm. And I read a different portion. So, even though that's my oldest book, I guess I could say... Um, second to oldest. Well, that's true. That is true. This was a section that I've only read once before, and so I feel like that was good. I did forget to give my little, like, I had a little background, because it's from more of, like, the middle of the book, and I had, like, a little, like, lead up to kind of let people know who the characters were and stuff, and I forgot to do that in the beginning, but that's okay. But she did it at the end, and it was really, really special because it was a—it was an emotional section. It was an emotional place to read, and so we're all feeling these emotions. And then she lets us know that this is like a found family situation, and, and what's going on with the the characters there, and um, it just kind of validated the fact that we felt those emotions. Also, can I just say, as a cold read, like without having any background or whatever, like you have true reader response on how that makes readers feel. Like, so, yeah. 
I mean, because there was no background, I think that that gave you kind of a, a place to say that you have some data in that. Like, you know that section is gold. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I haven't thought about it like that. I, the first time that I read that section, I felt like it went really well. And so that's part of why I decided to do that one today. So, thank you. Okay, so that's our creative week, guys. Let's talk about this workshop that we did together. Okay. So, do you want so, to give a breakdown yeah. of what, like, what the structure of everything was? Okay, so okay. if you guys remember, we had to take a little bit of a break. So we got to a point in working on the workbook where we knew that we needed to get together to finish what we were doing. It wasn't working in our hour or two hour increments um, digitally together, and we decided that we needed to wait until we could get together. So this was our opportunity, our first opportunity to actually get together to do this. So we came together to finish going through what we needed to add and change and alter with the challenges from the book to put into the workbook. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were doing. And we accomplished it. We actually finished it. We awesome. met a goal. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting. Yes. If there was a moment where I wasn't sure we were going to, so that's why I'm super excited about that. We did actually complete it. So, yes, I think takeaways. Like, what did we? Uh... Here's one of my takeaways. We took some pretty decent notes on the workshops that we did before. So one of the things that we did before we got together was reviewed all of the different sections in the book and came up with ideas in order for, uh, in order to make either additions to the workbook or if, if it just needed to stay the same as it was in the book. And so that, taking those really good notes was super helpful. And we did that before. So whenever we got together here, we kind of had to reacclimate ourselves to what we were doing because we did take that bit of a gap where we, we did a different project for just a moment. But the fact that we took really good notes, well, <laughs> mostly really good mostly notes. Mostly really good notes. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, we mostly listened to ourselves. Yeah. So here's the thing that was interesting. Here's an observation that was interesting. You could tell the notes that were from different sections or, or different work Definitely. sessions. Definitely. So there like we <laughs> could tell when there were times where obviously we had been eating a lot of sugar or something and we were very energized. Maybe there was some extra coffee that day. I Maybe don't know. I don't and know. going back to it, we were like, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing that. Because <laughs> it was like, we were going to write these like very complicated brand new things to add into this workbook. And we're like, that is not what people no. want with the workbook. <laughs> so what we have though is we have kept those things. We haven't gotten rid of them. They are great ideas, they really are, and they are going to one day become workshops or presentations or additional things that we can offer people. Right, but in the project that we were working on right then and there, they were dumb. Yes, <laughs> it was a bad idea. It was just, it was not me. no. Me. Um, there were some good ideas in there too, and we had those too, but um, so we had those notes. We also had to come up with a color coordinating system yes. because- There was we, a little bit of color chaos in one Yes. Point. So we, we also had sections, going back to my observation, we also had sections where we didn't write enough. So those were the, those must have been the sleepy days, the tired days. <laughs> that is true. The days when we had a lot of things on our mind and we just had to... Smushed it in between all the things. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. So we actually had a color in our color coordinating session. Uh, where it was like, what is this? Question mark. We don't know what this is. Yeah, we did. We did put that. <laughs> like, we don't even know what we were saying here. Like, this is, yeah. yeah. But we eventually figured that one out. And yes. we were able to reallocate that color in mm -hmm. our color coding system to something else. Right. Yeah, but, but there was but, a moment yes. when purple was like the whoa <laughs> color. We don't know what we were doing. <laughs> something was happening in the air around us. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so being able to have a lot of time all at one sitting means that we didn't have to reacclimate ourselves each individual small small session yes, so huge. that was really what we needed to do in order to save ourselves like five ten hours worth of work yeah. we had to come together and really put in the work for six hour sessions four hour sessions things like that like so longer sessions for us to to get this to the place it needed to be so that we could go back to our homes and continue in our digital 
um, workload. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now we know the next step. So for us, our next step is to enter in the editing phase um, mm -hmm. for this workbook. And that is something that we can do separately mm -hmm. digitally with no problem um, because we've done that before. Yep. And so we've set some deadlines for ourselves. Um, I know I've set mine. Um, I think we have. Yep. We've set we set those deadlines so we know mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to have this complete by this date. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Right. And hopefully from here, it's going to be um, pretty smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did you have any other observations that, or lessons or tips? or? No, I mean, there's always like that fear. I always have that fear of when you come back to something after a while, like, can I, can I get back in the groove of this? Um, and there were a few moments like there at the beginning as we were getting back into it, that acclimating back to the project where it's like, oh, can we do this? Like, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did we not take good enough notes? Did we, you know, all these questions start to come. Mm -hmm. But then as we get our flow and we start to get back into it, it, it went really well. And we also, I think I will say, to give us some some kudos here for the fact that it did feel a little difficult to get into it as we started. We came back in at a point in the workbook where there were a lot of heavy challenges and it was very challenge heavy. So there was a lot going on there, a lot of addition, a lot of all of those things. So for us to come in at that point, I think was probably already going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, and so I think we did that well because toward the end of the book, there aren't as many challenges, there weren't as many additions, there weren't as many of those things. And so as we got back into the flow and we got over that hump, I guess you could say, the end really was a great place to just kind of be able to flow through without too much getting bogged down. Yes. But also in real time, we didn't know that was going to happen. No. Like we didn't know that there was the end was going to be a downhill slope. Like we were like, we <laughs> <laughs> were like, I remember at one point, like, like last night, we're looking at each other like, how are you feeling? You feeling good? We're feeling good, right? Yeah, it's good. We, we can finish this, right? Yeah. And I, I watched Joy, like, voices. start blinking, <laughs> like, like, start blinking a lot slower. Yeah, <laughs> I almost fell asleep a couple of times last night. Right, right. But we got up at 6.30 this morning, and we knocked it out. We knocked it out. Another three or four-hour session, and yep. it was done. It was done. Yep. Uh, as far as writing with a partner and working on this with a partner, that was – really great for me. It, it really helps to have somebody to commiserate with, but also to celebrate with. And, and writing the book in, in originally was, was a really cool thing. But what I loved about being with a partner in this particular, for this particular project was because when you're revisiting a project that you wrote three years ago, you might not remember all of the nuances and everything that went into it. So yeah, I could say, Joy, do you remember what X, Y, and Z was all about? And she could be like, actually, May. <laughs> Let's hope one of us remembers, right? Right, right. So that was really, really great to have somebody to bounce things off of and try to try to remember what was going on in the past and also how to it, it bring that into the present with what we've already learned what we've learned since then yes. incorporated into it and so that was that was a bit of a challenge i think for us yeah. in certain sections of it and um, then in other ways it was very uh affirming mm -hmm. and it was a reminder that what we had written you know it still stands it's evergreen like it's good like we stand behind what we put out there and so i think right. that, that was another good thing for us as well so. right and when we were doing it, we wanted to make sure that we honored what we already had put out into the world and that we didn't, um, we didn't like ignore certain bits of it or try to alter it in a way that did not um, honor the heart of what was already there. So that was, the, I mean, that was part of the conversation as well. Working on providing something else with a project that's already out in the world, like that's maybe a little tip as far as trying to keep it uh, keep the heart and soul of the original project alive and well in the new one that's coming out. Yeah, because we, we did have a few moments where we were like, okay, we don't want to put this the exact same way mm -hmm. that we did from the challenge in the book. We want to tweak it, but we had to make sure that we held that heart, and we did. Right. No, I agree with you. But it was because we were aware of it, like we, because we, did, we knew that we wanted to to preserve that, and we didn't just kind of go off the handle with uh, with new ideas and new uh, new additions and things like that. That probably was a little, it was a, 
it was a good boundary that we placed. So boundaries are not necessarily bad. Like I, I think that whenever you are creating the world is your oyster, right? <laughs> and so you can go in any direction, no matter wh what it is, you can create a new direction if you wanted to. Like, but having, um, having our fundamental seniors that we were able to go back to, um, knowing who our audience was and also having, uh, being aware that we want to keep the heart and soul of the original product. Those were three, three things that we kept coming back to over and over again and really set us on the right path to complete this project. Fair? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as for a challenge for you guys, um, I think. Just off the top of my head, I would say if you are facing or in the middle of a project and you're having a little bit of overwhelm, like we were feeling, like coming back to this mm -hmm. after this time gap, um, can we just make this challenge instead like an encouragement? Like, <laughs> just do it. I mean, yes, maybe it's good to acknowledge those, those fears and those anxieties and those worries that you have over it, but just dive in, so, you know, make your plan, set your plan, and go back in. Um, you might surprise yourself, really. And, you know, I, I don't know, at least for me, like, starting something is the hardest. So whatever it takes to get you to get over that starting point and just get going, um, we encourage you to just, yeah, absolutely. Um, there is one more thing. That I was thinking, and this was an accidental thing that happened, and I think that actually it ended up helping me um, at the end of the at the end of the day. Um, and that was we accidentally took like a three hour sushi break. Ooh, yeah, eat sushi. Yeah, is what we're saying. So, I think that's what I. Well, heard. we made I'm sorry. it. Sorry, like we, we had to go to the store. We had to finally get sushi rice. That was that was a thing. Um, <laughs> like we thought it was just going to be like a, a 15, 20 minute trip to Walmart. Walmart does not have sushi rice. They don't mm -hmm. have it. Um, and I already had all the other stuff to make sushi, but I didn't have the rice, which is like kind of a pinnacle. <laughs> kind exactly. Of it so we went to another grocery store, couldn't find the sushi rice there. Like had to go to the international market to find the sushi rice, which is much farther away. By the time we made the rice and made the sushi and everything, it was probably what, three, four hours before we got back to the project. And, um, but that actually wasn't a for for me like we had struggled through quite a bit by the time we got to that place that so we would have been working probably a good solid six hours by the time um, we needed to go to the grocery store and it was that hard work that Julie was talking about earlier too so I say yes just do it don't think about like don't think about the fear and all that kind of stuff too but also like take a sushi break do something different for just a bit and then come back to it and just be like don't even look at the fear just look at what you have to do before in front of you look at yeah look at that outline and process it and embrace like if if either a break that you intended to take takes longer <laughs> or it's a break that you weren't expecting to take don't get mad at it right. embrace it and move on because i do feel like it probably was a good thing we probably needed to Right. I mean, six hours, that's a long time. So, yeah, like, the challenge is that. Yeah. Okay. So, we hope that you have a fantastic week. Yes. And go make something. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this episode encouraged you. Like all creatives, we thrive on consumer recommendations. So please consider leaving us a review and sharing our podcast with your creative friends. If you'd like to continue this conversation, visit us on our website at QWERTYWritingLife.com or on Instagram at QWERTYWritingLife.